millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hey friends, Shauna here, and I'm curious, have you ever wondered how you can sell stuff online and actually make money? There are tons of places to sell your stuff, but today we are going straight to the source. We're talking to Brad Williams, head of communications at Mercari, which is the fastest growing resale marketplace app. You've probably seen their commercials a time or two. And get this, he says the average person has around 723 bucks of stuff in their house right now, just waiting to be sold. The average household in America has 42 items they're no longer using. Multiply that by the number of U.S. households, that's 5.3 billion items. Each of these households estimate they could get $723 if they were to sell the items. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Big thanks to You Need a Budget for sponsoring today's episode. You Need a Budget or YNAB is an award-winning software and a proven budgeting method that actually works. Stop stressing about money and start your free 34-day trial of YNAB today by going to ynab.com slash millennial. That's ynab.com slash millennial. I love the idea of selling stuff online. In fact, I was so inspired by the conversation I had with Brad that I literally went home and started looking around and I found a nice collection of stuff that I'm not using. So I thought, why not turn it into cash if someone else could use what I'm not using? When I told some of my friends that I was doing this episode, they loaded me up with questions because I think Everyone loves the idea of bringing in a little extra cash and selling some of their stuff, but a lot of people just haven't been able to have it work for them. But what could you do with an extra 100 bucks or so a month just from selling what you're not using? I think it could be pretty powerful in helping you reach your money goals or pay off debt or just fund your holiday shopping. So on this episode, we talk about the evolution of selling stuff online, how you can find the right place to sell your stuff, what stuff actually earns the most money, and why this time of the year is actually the best time to sell online. You don't want to miss this one. So as I mentioned to you, the idea of selling on resale marketplaces is this conversation that a lot of my friends are having. I know a lot of the listeners have sent me questions as well. So many people have tried their luck unsuccessfully at selling goods on lots of different sites, and they just can't figure out kind of how to crack the code. So I thought we'd start with maybe, you know, what is a resale marketplace anyway, and why should somebody consider selling on it? Yeah, it's uh, they're all around us, and they've been around us since the beginning of time. Um, you know, the earliest crossroads in civilization were set up for trade, um, yeah. garage sales. I mean, you know, you 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 go to you go to Europe or Asia, and on, you know, and there's an open market, and there's people trading. I mean, so trade is part of who we are. Um, and you know, there were always garage sales and things. And then about 20 years ago, eBay and Craigslist brought that all online and really revolutionized resale yeah. uh, and really made it accessible to everybody. Um, but as somebody who has sold and bought a lot of stuff on eBay, in fact, I used to work for eBay for several years. 
Um, it took a long time. It takes like, you know, about 45 minutes to do a really conscientious listing, in my experience, on, on eBay. Uh, and Mercari is an app, and there are other apps, too, that have come along since eBay. Um, but Mercari is the selling app. We focus on one thing, and that's making selling easier than buying. And on Mercari, it, you take a few pictures, and it takes, a, on average, a little over three minutes based on our data to create a listing. Um, doesn't cost anything to list. When it sells, there's a 10% uh, uh, fee taken out of the final price. Shipping's integrated into it, so you can print out a label right away, slap it on, and uh, drop it off, and you're on your way. Interesting. Yeah, I'm very thankful that garage sales, there's an easier way to do garage sales now. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, you know, it, well, it really varies because, I mean, it, it, yeah. varies on, it varies by what you're selling, who True. you want to reach. Do you want to reach a local market or a, or a national audience? Um it you know are you selling a piano or a car or a dress or a and you know now there are you know any number of vertical marketplaces you know like Poshmark where you know they focus on one type of thing so in addition to general marketplaces like Mercari um, you know there are are more vertical marketplaces as well now a lot of people come to Mercari to buy or sell clothing in fact it's our number one category um, and then they see wow I can sell or buy just about anything on this site. Um, so fashion is a common point of entry for us, um, as is electronics um, and other categories. But people come in and see that um, it's, it's so much easier now to, to, to list an item. Think about how much your smartphone has just changed your daily life. Totally, um, yeah. And so when eBay and Craigslist were built, you know, smartphones didn't exist. And um, you know, so eBay spent time building an app. Craigslist never really did. Some developer built one. It doesn't work very well. Um, but you know, they're a nonprofit, right? So, sure. um, but then, um, um, other, other trading platforms that were developed kind of post smartphone have benefited from having that camera location sensing accelerometer. I mean, all kinds of built-in sensors and technologies, um, that make and and just to say nothing of photography and the quality of photography available on your phone. I used to list with a digital SLR on eBay. Wow, it makes me, makes me sound old, but <laughs> back but in like, the day, <laughs> yeah. But it's like now, why bother? It's like I can edit photos so much more simply on my iPhone than I ever could with my digital SLR. It's like why bother? So, um, you know, the joke is I've sold you know some of my digital SLR gear on Mercari. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so so we, we've all got stuff lying around, and the reason your friends ask you about this is. Um, People have had, you know, a range of experiences with it. A lot of people um, have tried it and it didn't go well and they kind of gave up. Others kind of weighed into it and become naturals. Um, at Mercari, we're, we're, we want people to know that anybody can sell. It's really easy. It's just a few, a few pictures on your phone. You write a quick description. You click a couple of options and it's listed. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I was even like last night, just kind of looking around my house and knowing that we were going to do this episode, and I was in my head counting up all of these things that we no longer use that are just kind of sitting around. And and when I think about a lot of people, especially going into the holidays or maybe looking for an extra buck or two for gifts or whatever it may be, like there's probably a lot of money potentially sitting around everybody's house or apartment, but we're just not maybe thinking that way that we could actually have a place to sell those things to turn into cash. Yeah. And it's just, um, it, it's one of those things. It's easy to kick the can down the road. It's easy to, to put off. Um, but we did some research earlier this year, some um, national consumer opinion study that showed that um, 50% of Americans say they're overwhelmed by the amount of stuff in their homes. The wow. average home, the average household in America has 42 items they're no longer using. 42 I items. believe it. I, I, I probably have 42. <laughs> Mul well, multiply that by the number of U.S. households. That's 5.3 billion items. Gosh, wow. So each of these, each of these, uh, each of these households estimate they could get $723 if they were to sell the items. So no way. Again, so you add that up as a nation, it is $93 billion hiding in our homes. Wow, um, that is a startling statistic. But I mean, you're, yeah, you're absolutely dead on. Wow. Well, think about well, and it's a it's a uniquely American problem. Um, the other thing we found is that twenty percent of Americans now pays rent for self storage. 
Mm, yeah. Paying yeah, rent. You, right. don't, you don't need you don't need to be a personal finance podcaster to tell people that's a bad idea. Paying rent for stuff that you don't use <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. And you know, and it's almost like a it's it, it's almost like payday loans. I mean, they get your credit card and they just right. you know punch right. it every month and your stuff stays there. And um the storage industry, it's kind of it's it's a little it's a little evil. They're they're telling us that you need you may need that stuff. Don't get rid of it. You may, hang on to it. And it's um, not cheap either to store your stuff. I mean, it can be very expensive. It's not cheap and it's not it's just not just conscious. It's unconscious. Um and the interesting thing is, you know, if you go to uh London or Paris or Tokyo or Beijing or Rio and say, "Hey guys, where would I find a self-storage facility?" They'd look at you like you were from Mars. Right. Uh, it's a uniquely American and maybe Canadian thing. Um, is that just because we we just feel like we can't let go of our stuff? Like maybe we're not defined by our stuff, but what if we might need that extra toaster somewhere down the line? I'll answer that question with another data point. So the U.S. has about as many self-storage facilities as it has Starbucks, McDonald's, and Subway locations combined. Oh my and that's gosh. an actual that's an actual fact. I've got the source somewhere, but that's an actual data point. Um, I mean, think about that. Um, and it's just um, it's just and it's uniquely American. It's kind of like you know, obesity and gun violence. <laughs> think, <laughs> fantastic, things, think, fantastic. Things, th- things that 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 are uniquely American. That um, that you know, you have to look at it through. You know, you have mm-hmm. to zoom out and look at it and say, why are we like this as a country? Um, why do we allow our stuff to accumulate to the point where half of us say it gives us anxiety? So is there, knowing that then, is there a way to figure out when we're going through our house, looking through our things that we could sell? It, how do we figure out what, what might have value, what might not, yeah. what's good to list, like all of those yeah. dynamics? We'll start with a purge. Um, I mean, it always, and, and and purge more than you want to purge. Um, if you want to follow the Marie Kondo method or the common sense method or whatever method you want to use, um, but start with, without thinking about where this stuff's going to go, right. look things, look at things in your, in your, in your home that are not being used. Um, they may be things that are worth a lot of money. They may be things that aren't worth a lot of money, but just get them all together. Some of them you're going to want to donate. Some of them you're going to want to sell and some of them you're going to want to recycle. Um, and some of them you may just want to throw out. Right. <laughs> um, as, as few, as few of that as, as possible. Right. So, um, but you should be able to, you know, your first option ought to be to sell. It's funny, you know, Mercari started in Japan. Um, and we're the number one marketplace in Japan. We're kind of the eBay of Japan in a lot of ways. We, we wow, kind of yeah. e- exploded in Japan about six years ago. And, um, Mercari is everywhere in Japan. It's interesting. It's a, it's a really well-known company and a really well-known marketplace. And um, so we launched here in the U.S. a few years ago based on our success in Japan. But, you know, you watch Marie Kondo and you read her books and, um, you know, her, her, I don't know how familiar with it, but the whole thing about, you know, sparking joy, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and giving things a hug and letting it go. And, you know, what's interesting to me is she doesn't do what they really do in Japan, which is sell that stuff. Right. Um, right. Right. I mean, so like every every man, woman, and child in in in, in Japan uh, is selling stuff on Mercari. Practically, it's, you know, it's like four, we've got fourteen million monthly active users in Japan, and right. Um, so it's it's sort of the toast of Japan. And let me tell you, Marie Kondo is is maybe not the best representation of Japan because they don't hug it and like give it away. They sell it. Let it go. Yeah. 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 So so to answer your question, um, what can you sell? Um, brands sell. So start with clothing. The, mm-hmm. the easiest, the easiest, probably first item to sell. Um, I mean, who doesn't have an old cell phone lying around? Oh yeah. Everyone. Right? Yes. Grab one of those, grab one of those. And actually if you, if you so punch in your cell phone and we, we can, you can punch in your details uh, about what model it is and how much memory it is and all that kind of stuff, what generation. And, um, we'll create a listing for you and, and propose and suggest a price. Um, so, I mean, electronics like, uh, like mobile phones, um, um, you know, smartwatches, uh, you know, Fitbits, that kind of stuff, um, right. um, laptops, um, personal, you know, Bluetooth speakers, um, those kinds of things, but clothing, um, brands really, I mean, so, so our, our top brands are almost always, uh, Nike, Apple, Adidas, 
um, a lot of clothing and shoes, a lot of athletic wear, but a lot of fashion and a lot of really hot fashion too. Um, really? If you, wow. If, if you poke around, yeah. Um, so um, the things, interestingly, the things that sell uh, the best on Mercari uh, oftentimes are things that are lightly used uh, versus things that are new. In fact, across the site, we see things that are lightly used convert faster than things that are new. It might be because they're priced better. Sure. Um, but so if you have something that's gently used, don't say, well, nobody's going to want this because it's more likely they will if it is used. Um, what about uh, like appliances? Yeah, I mean, so so the 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 the, the, fe- the distinguishing feature of Mercari is everything ships. So as long as it's a small appliance, absolutely. I mean, not like a you know a a, a, a range, right? Um, <laughs> but 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 you know anything up to like a microwave or you know blenders and kitchenware. We do. There's a ton of uh, really nice kitchenware on Mercari, um, and about you know a, a, about a quarter of our stuff is 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 new at any given time. Um, so there's new and used uh, listings on the site all the time. Um, we've got about 45 million downloads in the U.S. So a lot of people are using this. They're, they're uploading about 150,000 listings every day. Wow. Um, so, there's, so there's real liquidity on the site and stuff really sells. And the best part is you don't have to do any meetups. There's no weird alley meetups. Um, right. There's you know, no safety risk going there's on. There's no handing off money like, you know. Um, yeah, and, that's just, <laughs> and that just makes people – we know that makes people uncomfortable. So everything ships. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's the way our, our business runs in Japan. Everything ships and it just makes it simple. And we've, we've worked with, you know, UPS and FedEx, uh, and the postal service to, to have, you know, really easy shipping options that are built right into the app and make it really simple. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. I'm getting the itch to travel. So I wanted to bring you this Friday find three awesome hotel deals that you can take advantage of if you're also getting the itch. I'm going to make sure and put the offer codes in the show notes just in case you're already packing your bags. So I'll make this really easy for you. The first offer is from Viceroy Hotels and they have hotels all around the world. They're awesome. Viceroy Los Cabos is offering 30% off rooms, 40% off suites, and 50% off villas. 
Viceroy Riviera Maya is offering up to 50% off with breakfast and a $50 daily resort credit. That's crazy. There's also deals at Viceroy Santa Monica, Snowmass, San Francisco, Beverly Hills, Chicago, so lots of different hotel offers. The code you need is CYBER2019, and these deals will be available from November 27th until December 6th. The second offer is in New York City, and this is from Gainsvort Meatpacking. They have an awesome Cyber Monday sale for up to 15% off rooms. You get two seasonal cocktails. Love that. Early check-in, late check-out, and you can get an upgrade upon availability. They're also going to throw in some Black Friday swag bags, all sorts of cool stuff. So their code is CYBERMON, C-Y-B-E-R-M-O-N, and they're going to be kicking this off on December 2nd. So definitely head there. And Virgin Hotels, I mean, who doesn't love Virgin Hotels? If you've ever stayed at one, I stayed at the one in Chicago. I was a huge fan. The room was big and super funky. It was just a great hotel. So they are, of course, the hotel brand by Virgin Group founder Sir Richard Branson, of course, and they're offering a full month of holiday joy with travel deals for Cyber Month. Yes, so they are coining a new thing here. So guests who book from December 2nd to January 2nd save up to 30% off stays, and you can stay from December 2nd, 2019, all the way through June 1st, 2020. So you just have to book in that short time period but then you can stay later on. They've got Virgin Chicago, Virgin San Francisco, Virgin Dallas, tons of different offers for you. Plus you get 30% off the best rate available, which is super awesome. So I think the question is, where should we all go? I get a lot of these offers, they come over my email. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good, but I want to make sure and pass the good ones along to you because I'm a big believer that you can travel without spending a ton of cash. And sometimes even just a day away or two nights away, if that's all you can afford, is enough to recharge, relax, really get your zen on. But when you can save 30%, 40%, 50%, you can get upgrades, all sorts of good things like that, it starts to make the offer super attractive. So head on over to the show notes. I'll have all of the codes that you will need to go ahead and book if you're looking to take advantage of one of these deals. Listen, I was in a constant search trying to find the budgeting software that would actually help me achieve my goals. I was so happy when I found You Need a Budget. I love how YNAP helps me gain control of my money, and their mission is to help everyone stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. You can easily set up your budget where you can plan and save for all of your goals. And the cool thing is you can see your money come to life. YNAB is available for web, iOS, and Android, and they even offer free live educational workshops every single day so you can win at budgeting as well. Do yourself a favor. Stop stressing about money and start your free 34-day trial of YNAB today by going to ynab.com slash millennial. That's Y-N-A-B dot com slash millennial. Let's say I have a used cell phone. So am I then setting the price for that or are you then suggesting the price and then the price is set that way? We can suggest the price for you, but you ultimately set your price. That's okay. up to you. Um, and so, um, yeah, cell phone's a great thing to start with. Any kind of a branded um uh, you know, like sneakers or a branded top or like a, you know, branded polo shirt or a sweater or, you know, um, um, mainstream popular fashion brands are very popular. Um, but also like sporting goods and collectibles mm. and pretty much. So think about your house in terms of like what's in the garage. Well, maybe there's like sporting goods you could sell. Maybe there's camping gear. We do a lot of that. Um, and, you know, who doesn't have stuff like that in their garage that they're no longer, you're like, you know, I've got like an old pair for of ski sure. Yeah. <laughs> old pair of ski boots that have been meeting the list, right? And I'll, I can sell them for, you know, 50 bucks for them instead of them, you know, sitting in my garage. Um, and then go through your closet 
and then go through your, you know, your laundry room and then go through your pantry and look for, you know, kitchenware and things that you're no longer using. You know, um, it's funny, a lot of people, um, um, sell un, unused, practically unopened gifts on their car. It's a great place to, instead of regifting it, just sell it. Um, so many people get gifts that they don't like over the holidays. Right. Um, it's turn around selling. We see a ton of them listed in January. There's always like a surge in listing in January of gifts people got that they don't like. It's all brand new. And they didn't wow. pay for it. And so you can get some really great right, deals. Yeah. Um, but the other thing to consider is, you know, think kind of as a contrarian. You know, as we head into Black Friday and everybody's shopping, everybody's buying, right? It's like it's this pack mentality. It's a great time to sell. Yeah, you you're know? right. You're right. So, people are out there so, looking. Yeah. Right. So instead of out shopping with everybody, like stay home and list stuff, sell to them, <laughs> line your pockets, and then go out and do your shopping when they've all finished up and everything's on sale. Yeah, it's a great way to pad your holiday budget. I mean, if you could find seven hundred dollars worth of stuff in your place, I mean that's that's a that's a very decent holiday budget, I think. Or a trip, or gosh, who knows? What a pay off a credit yeah. card. Well, our yeah. average seller, our average seller, average seller, even very casual sellers, makes about one hundred and twenty dollars a month selling on the site. Wow, um, I mean that's real cash. Like that's it's real cash, and it's sort of unconscious too. You're doing it like during commercial breaks, watching TV, or like sitting in traffic. It's very easy. It's very easy to kind of blend into your life. So, thinking about just a, another quick question about pricing, how much? If you're a seller, like how much research should you be doing about what similar brands or similar items are selling for? Like, is there any way as a seller you could kind of figure out that sweet spot? Absolutely. And you really should, especially as a new seller. That's probably the most common mistake is um, pricing by gut. And typically that's pricing too high um, because when you look at the data, which is so look at sold items, um, you can look at listings on Mercari uh, or on eBay for that matter or, or any other site and see what the what the selling prices are. are, are. But the, the most important data point is the sold items. So do a search mm, for yeah, sold okay. items on Mercari for your item and you'll see what they actually sold for. And you'll get a really clear idea of where you should price it. And then I typically look at that range and say, okay, I want to price it at about like maybe, you know, midpoint or 60% of that range. Um, I don't want to be at the top. Uh, I don't want to be at the bottom. And then if I want to reduce it a little later, I can. And, you know, so I leave a little room for myself. Um, Mercari will send you a prompt if it hasn't sold after a while. Like, hey, do you want to knock your price down a little bit? And then we'll feature it. Um, mm, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so there are ways to kind of like keep your listing alive, relist if it doesn't sell. Um, but stuff really sells and it's because you're selling to a national audience, um, and, uh, and everything sells. And, and, and there is, you know, as you've seen, you know, in mainstream retail in America, there's resale is really having a, a renaissance. You know, you have thread up putting shops within shops in JC Penney and Macy's, um, you know, and other, other, um, you know, and Poshmark and the Real Real and 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 Mercari. I mean, these are all ascendant businesses, and there, and there's a there's a national discussion that ranges from you know sustainability in some cases in some quarters to just value to uh, uniqueness. And I, I don't want store bought stuff. I want to find interesting things um, that have some soul. Mm, I like that. Yeah. So if let's flip the coin a little bit. Let's say I'm a buyer and I've got this question a lot, particularly of if I'm buying clothes, how do I know the cleanliness of clothes or how do I trust that when I get the item, it's going to be maybe gently used as the ad said? I mean, is yeah. there any, you know, what's a refund policy? Like, how does that all work if I'm the actual yeah. buyer? So there's two things. If, if you just have a phobia, we can't help you. Um, but, but, <laughs> there's a, but, there's but, a special course for that. <laughs> right, right. It's not on our site. But, um, but, but we have certainly, um, you know, buyer protections and recourse. And if, any, if an item is not as described. So the way our site works is a little different than, like, for example, eBay. The, the funds aren't released to the seller until the buyer has received the item and said, I got it and it's good. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so we actually, we actually, um, um, uh, process the payment on our app, on our platform. Um, so like on eBay, for example, when you sell an item, the minute somebody buys it, you get your money and that makes right. kind of hard, you know, potentially for the buyer to have any recourse because like they've already got your money and like, right. I'm not giving you the money back. <laughs> right. So, so this is, and we find that sellers don't mind waiting a couple more days to get paid. Um, because they know the, they know they're not going to, you know, have a buyer come back to them later and say, I have a problem. 
Right. So it's just yeah, kind of yeah. more convenient for everybody. We also have uh, this is kind of cool. We just introduced a couple of months ago a feature called Instant Pay that allows you to take your Mercari balance up to 500 bucks you know, in, in sales, um, transfer that to your bank account in a couple of minutes versus three to five days, which is what it typically takes for a bank transfer. Mm, um, yeah, that's so awesome. It's a, it's a $2 fee um, and you can get up to 500 bucks. And we're looking at raising that limit um, down the road. Um, but it, we're the only marketplace that has that. It's interesting. Um, Uber and Lyft um, use a similar thing to pay their drivers on demand. And uh, we've we've kind of repurposed it for paying our sellers on demand. Yeah, on demand's the the hot thing. I know if I have an option and it's like pay me now or pay me in five days and it's two yeah. bucks, I'm going to say okay, pay me now. I know the, oh my gosh. the, so, the value well, of money right now. <laughs> well, yeah, we have paid. We we launched this maybe a couple months ago. We've paid out millions and millions and millions of dollars. I mean, well over ten million dollars um, via instant pay. And each time, you know, someone's been willing to pay this fee and it really just covers our costs. But that's an expression that like, yeah, I don't mind the, the, the two dollars. The convenience is more important to me. Yeah. So what are some of the other fees associated if you're a seller? Uh, you, you set the price of, let's say, I'm just picking a number. My price is 20 bucks for whatever item I'm selling. Yeah. How do the fee structure kind of work out in terms of what I get, you know, back for so that item? It's dead simple. 10%. Easy. That's it. So yeah. on other marketplaces, there are like, you know, you can, it's more a la carte, you know, like you can feature, you can bold your, your heading, you can add a subhead, you can add extra photos. And there's, it's almost like buying a classified ad. And for a lot of people, that's just too wonky. And it's like, I just want to list this thing. <laughs> um, I just want to sell this. <laughs> and, right. And so that's why it takes about three minutes. And Mercari is like, just list it. Um, and so you don't, you don't pay a fee up front. There's no like choosing different, you know, pay levels and stuff. It's just like, nope, list it for free. If and when it sells, 10%. That's it. And that includes shipping and all of that good stuff? No, shipping or is... it is, extra? So, so the seller can can pay for shipping themselves, which we recommend because it makes it more attractive to buyers. Okay. Um, but you don't have to. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a free marketplace and you can charge your buyers for shipping if you want. But we think it's more competitive as a seller to include shipping. And like I said, we've got deals with um, the Postal Service and UPS and FedEx... Um, on a range of different shipping options. But the main thing is we buy in bulk and we save a lot of money. So we have really, really um, um, competitive shipping rates that are way better than you'd get if you walked into the you know, the post office or the UPS store. Um, yeah, I know. And, I think and, Amazon has ruined me for uh, free shipping. Right. Anytime I have to pay shipping somewhere, I'm like, really think whether I want this item or not. <laughs> yeah. And so, that, right. And that's why we encourage people to, sellers to really consider, you know, including shipping. So as a seller, if you include shipping, it's a good deal because we've got a good price on it. Uh, and you've got different options that you can choose from. But more than that, it's easy. You just like push a button, your label prints out, boom, it's gone. Um it's all integrated. It's really simple. And we've worked really hard to make it um, a low friction, easy process from beginning to end. So basically, there's no reason that people shouldn't do this. I mean, we, we've already just determined that there's cash sitting in your house, in your apartment, whatever it may be right now. People want this stuff. And obviously, this is a this is a great season to be doing this. But I, I'd love if you'd leave us with, is there like one overarching tip or something we should think about of, of how to win at the resale marketplace? I'll tell you, um, it's uh, get on it and get on it for Black Friday. Um, if you uh, if you want to have a quick su quick success and a quick sort of look at what it's like to, to be a seller in 2019, um, get out ahead of Black Friday um, and you'll see very quickly. Um, the, you know, the, really the main enemy of the, the, the biggest, the biggest barricade to conversion for, for turning those items into cash is complacency and procrastination. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all do it. And it's, so it's really kind of get off your couch and sell that stuff and, uh, just takes a couple of minutes, but do it when people are buying. Um, it'll, it'll, it's, there's a real rush to it. It's, uh, when, when something, you know, you get this little cha-ching notification on your phone, it's like, wow, that's cool. That just happened. I like the cha-ching. Yes. Well, Brad, this has been so fantastic. I love for you to tell the listeners where they can go to sign on to Macari easily and get started selling their stuff. Yeah, go to uh, the Google Play or the uh, or the I iTunes Store and download the Mercari app. It's M E R C A R I, uh, or you can check out our website at mercari.com. I want to know if you take action from this episode and successfully sell on Mercari or any other resale marketplace. 
as I'm recording this episode right now, I literally have four items up on Mercari. And so I'm going to let you know as well if they sell. I think it was so great to have an insider break down what we need to know. And I feel like Brad just gave us the fast pass, right? Thanks again for checking out this episode and big thanks to You Need a Budget for sponsoring. Start your free 34-day trial of YNAB by going to ynab.com slash millennial. Remember, head on over to iTunes, leave us a review, and don't forget to share this episode with your friends. I'll see you back here in a few days for a fresh new episode. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC.